Spike Prime is the latest LEGO Education Robotics kit that is competition ready for First LEGO League. Today we're going to look at 10 reasons why you would upgrade from EV3 to Spike Prime. The first reason to upgrade from EV3 to Spike Prime is Scratch 3.0. Now don't get me wrong, I love the EV3 software, but if you wanted to learn about uh, real world programming and something that is more synonymous with real world programming, then Scratch 3 does a much better job than the native EV3 app. For example, Scratch provides some really clear notation for if else blocks, and it is a much better alternative to the EV3 wait blocks and switch blocks. In the end, I think that the clearer notation from Scratch 3.0 is better for your team and it's going to save your team a lot of time when they're in competition. The second reason you would upgrade from EV3 to Spike Prime are the improved motor features, okay? So if you load up Spike Prime for the first time, don't forget to go to the bottom left of your screen and click on show block extensions and then you have to activate more motors and more movement. These give you some additional functionality that is not necessarily available in EV3. For example, Spike Prime has improved motor functionality like the shortest distance to block and also stall detection. Now, back in the day, you would have to write your own stall detection into your own code uh, as, an, as a my block, but in Spike Prime, it comes natively through these block extensions and they are extremely helpful for your FLL robot. The third reason you would upgrade from EV3 to Spike Prime is this new force sensor. Now, this force sensor looks very similar to the EV3 touch sensor, except for one very important difference. That is that it registers a continuous reading from zero to 10, okay? Zero to 10 Newtons, not just on and off like the EV3 touch sensor. This is the EV3 touch sensor. It only gives you an on or off state. This force sensor from Spike Prime gives you a continuous reading, which means that you can give your robot new functionality. For example, it can react differently, react with more or less force, depending on the force resistance that is detected through this force sensor. Spike Prime has a better hub. This hub is smaller, it's lighter, it is more rectangular, which means for tighter builds. It has a built-in gyro, which means that you don't have to have an additional gyro sensor attached to it. Plus, it has a really intuitive screen for controlling all your programs. This LED screen is large, it is bright, and there is less fiddling around and less confusion during an FLL match in choosing your programs. In addition, the hub has new events that you can handle. For example, it can detect taps, it can detect if it is falling, so that is going to give you a whole lot more opportunities to do some really innovative code solutions. Reason number five is wire clips. Are you tired of seeing a mess of wires in your FLL robot and when you're trying to repair or modify something, something will get mixed up? Well, in Spike Prime, it builds a great habit by using wire clips. It teaches students to match wires up with different colors and these wire clips will only work on the Spike Prime peripherals because of the shape of the cable. Wire clips help you manage your organization of your robot and it helps you avoid confusion when you're inside an FLL match. Reason number six are these three by three biscuits. Okay, so they're called biscuits because they look a little bit like a biscuit and also because they are very small and very, very handy. Okay, so they are three by three modules, but they provide lots of connection opportunities and opportunities to change direction with your connections. These substitute a lot of the multi-angle connections that are found in the EV3 kit. Spike Prime gives you a whole range of these biscuit parts and they make building your robot a lot less complicated. The best bit is that you don't need to use Spike Prime to get these pieces. You can buy these pieces separately if you want to keep your old EV3 robot builds. Reason number seven are these large frames. Now, when you're building a complicated robot, one of the hardest things is to try and build a large robot from small pieces, to try and uh, 
plan everything out and lay everything out so that your eventually large robot is built up bit by bit. And sometimes if your team is not very experienced, it can cause problems. You can make it so that your robot is built too flimsily without too much structural uh, organization. But with Spike Prime, it gives you a helping hand by giving you these really large frames, giving you a head start when you're building these larger robots. Reason number eight are these new squarer sensors. Okay, so we have our color sensor and our ultrasonic sensor, which are more square, okay? So they're rectangular. And if you compare them with the EV3 motors and sensors, I'm just going to grab this ultrasonic sensor, for example, you can see very clearly that the EV3 sensor is a lot more difficult to try and integrate with your build because uh, it is in an awkward shape. There are connection areas that are all uh, in different angles and different spaces. And it is, in general, a harder piece to integrate to a robot build. Whereas the Spike Prime Distance Sensor has a much more rectangular organization and it is much easier to figure out where to place it on your robot because it is so efficiently laid out. The same can be said for the motors. So the motors in Spike Prime have a much more rectangular shape. They have an axle that goes straight through them. Uh, whereas the EV3 um, media motor, for example, if you can see here, the shape is not as rectangular and in general it is going to be more difficult to integrate because this motor uh, only has one connection area for your axle whereas the Spike Prime motor has uh, the opportunity to go through the motor. Of course there is the large motor on the EV3 that, uh, that allows for your axle to go through it but it is an even more awkward shape to integrate. The large motor on EV3 is notoriously hard to place on a new robot. Reason number nine is that Spike Prime allows your robot to be even more expressive. Now, you've, we've talked about the LED screen on your hub. It allows you to add smiley faces or uh, expressive messages that are nice and bright and large, but also you can make it more expressive by adding light patterns to your ultrasonic sensor and also to your color sensor. You can change the the dimness of the light, you can change the, um, uh, the arrangement of the lights and the flashing pattern of the light to allow for some really cool little expressive parts to make your robot really stand out. The final reason for upgrading from EV3 to Spike Prime is the possibility for more than four motors or sensors on your robot. Now if you remember, in EV3 you can only have up to four input or four output ports, whereas on Spike Prime you have six ports that are both input or output. And I think this is a really exciting part of Spike Prime because it removes the old limitation of having four motors for your robot. In the past your FLL robot would probably use two motors for navigation and then two motors for adding extensions and manipulating your environment. But now with Spike Prime, it's possible to add a fifth motor and then maybe leave the sixth port free for a color sensor and we just use the onboard gyro for navigation. So those are my 10 reasons for why you would upgrade from EV3 to Spike Prime in your next first LEGO League robot. Do you agree with me? Maybe you can leave your comment in the comment section below. If you'd like to hear more about EV3, Spike Prime or first LEGO League, be sure to like and subscribe.